All right, welcome back, Cougs, to another episode on Cougan Clock. I'm your host, J.D. Smith. I'm here with Austin Peppers, making his first appearance. The topics we have for today is WSU baseball, men's March Madness, and women's. And then finally, we're going to end with mock draft picks of the first top couple picks, and then finish it off with some birthdays. All right, so let's get into our first topic, WSU baseball. We're coming off our 7 to 12, or well, let me say 12 to 7 loss to Gonzaga, our non-conference one. We started the game pretty good as usual. We had a 2-0 lead to start, but per usual, we cooped it. And then Zags came with a 5 to 2 run, then added two more to make it 7 to 2. So we had pretty good, we had pretty good hitting and we could make some scores, but it looks like uh, repetition from every other time. Any other thoughts? Yeah, and you talked about it. You know, the the Cougars getting off to a great start, 2-0 and oh in the first inning, getting off to the 2 nothing lead. But then Gonzaga putting up seven runs in the first and second inning combined. And that's been something that the Cougars have been struggling with recently as well, pitching, because this is the fourth game in a row, or fourth loss in a row, I should say, where the Cougars have allowed at least 12 runs or more. And the Cougars, offensively, they've been doing a good job getting at least seven runs in the past five games. But you need to have that lockdown pitching, especially if you want to win these games. You have the offense going, but the pitching just needs to come together, which I'm sure it will over time. You know, it's still early in the season. There's still plenty of time to go. And they have a huge series coming up against USC. Yeah, so, true. and that will be a very good series to watch. So that'll be very interesting to see how the pitching does against them. And yeah, um, US, I mean, USC is 11 and eight um, overall. We do have a better record than them. And then four and two in the conference. They sit at number three in the Pac-12 rankings right now. And we're at, I think, six. So this is a big triple header against them. They lost to U, um, UC Irvin by one run. I think we also lost to them. And then they, they did beat another not, a conference team, but it was Cal. They do hold the, Cal holds the re worst record being nine and eight overall, and then one and five in the conference. And then they also split with Stanford in a doubleheader. So this is a pretty big game for us. Like I said, we, like, I, like Alex said, our hitting became really good this year, but our pitching is not as good as it used to be. But it's no worries because all we gotta do is get in the rhythm and limit our errors and um, better pitching, and I think we'll, we'll have a good one. Yeah, and if the Cougars, you know, the pitching, something they need to get under control, but, and you talked about the offense. They have these players, you know, Jonah Advencula, you know, Cade Morrow. You know, they have these players that have just been getting it done offensively for the Cougs. And that is what has really helped this Washington State team do a great job this season. So if they can come together against this Trojan team, could look at a successful series and maybe even a series win. Who knows? I like to see it. Am I heading off to that? I think that will lead us into our, our next topic which is March Madness. Um, let's just talk about it. Alabama, I like Alabama coming out the South. Um, Brandon Miller, I think Alabama is going to kill San Diego State, and then they'll probably end up playing Creighton. But who knows, Princeton might win. Personally, I don't want Princeton to win, but they've been doing great. Um, for my East, I'm just going to talk about all who I think is going to be Elite Eight. For East, we already know K-State beat Michigan State 98-93. The game ended. Um, Michigan State had the ball, they had a chance to shoot a three, and they, the ball got stolen by um, Noel, and he ends it up with a reverse layup to finish the game, so they end up winning by five. But really, it was like three. And then I think Tennessee is gonna end up beating FAU, just because UT, I think UT is gonna do it. Um, what, who do you think is coming out the South and East? Well, as far as the South goes, I'm going to agree with you with Alabama. I think Alabama is just the more powerful team. And San Diego State, you know, great season for them, but I just can't see them getting over Alabama and getting over that hurdle. So I got the Crimson Tide in the Elite Eight, and I have them going up against Creighton. But who knows with how Princeton's been doing. This is the third year in a row where a 15th seed has made it to the Sweet 16 at least. And last year we had St. 
uh, Peters move on to the Elite Eight, so who knows? But I still think Creighton wins that. And as far as the East goes, I mean, obviously we had Kansas State, and I agree with you on the Tennessee pick as well. Tennessee, I honestly had Tennessee upset in the first round to Louisiana. I couldn't be more wrong about that, and they continue to prove me wrong, and I think they will continue that, and they will be in the Elite Eight, in my opinion. I like it. For the Midwest, I think I have the pick that I think is going to actually win. Houston, I think Houston might actually be able to win the whole tournament. Houston versus Miami is going to be a really tough one. Miami isn't a team that you can count off. Um, women's or men's teams, both their teams are very elite. And then um, it's three seed Xavier versus two seed Texas. Xavier is really good, and they finished second in the Big East to Marquette, who was another second seed that got upset. But I think Texas is going to win just because how they played in the Big 12 um, tournament, um, beating Kansas by 20 to take the championship. I just think that shows how much they can play. And I think it'll end up being Houston and Texas in the Midwest. And for the West, I know where UConn already won, but I think UCLA is going to take it against UConn and UCLA. I don't want to count UConn out because UConn just blew out a really good Arkansas team. I think it'll be like a 10 to five point game between UCLA. So hopefully um, UCLA can beat the Zags right now. Right, your picks? Yeah, in the Midwest, I'm going to agree on both picks. I have Houston beating Miami, and I have Texas beating Xavier. Um, and then for the West, I'm going to agree with you again. UCLA, you know, Gonzaga has great players like Drew Timmy and Anton Watson, but UCLA I think is just too powerful. And I think UCLA also makes it to the national championship on top of that, so that's my pick. I like it, I like it, we'll see. But um, that leads us into our next topic, which is Women's March Madness. Um, for me, I have South Carolina I think South Carolina may, might win the whole tournament. They've been, they haven't lost a game all season. They're going to blow out UCLA. They're just they're on a different level than everybody else in the tournament. I have them beating, I have them beating Maryland. Who's going to? I think Maryland is going to beat Notre Dame. Um, shout out to DMV, you know. Then I have Iowa beating the. I have Iowa going to the Elite Eight out of the Seattle Four section, just because. I don't really have any faith in the other teams. Hopefully Colorado can put up a good fight because that is the Pac-12, one of the few remaining um, teams for us. Then we go Miami Villanova. I was counting out Miami, but they did just pull off a huge upset in uh, right before this. So I want to take the underdog and have Miami win because they got, they got the two twins too. I ain't gonna talk about them too much, but y'all know what it is. Then we got LSU versus Utah, Pac-12. Pac-12 giant, um, WSU women's beat them. I don't have faith in Utah. I'm taking LSU. I can't remember her name from LSU, but she recorded 25, 24, and six blocks, which are crazy numbers for any tournament. So I'm taking her. I'm taking her, leading her team. And then I'm taking VT, shout out to 757, you know, Blacksburg. I'm taking them and UConn and Seattle 3. Any thoughts for you? Um, so I'm going to go with South Carolina beating UCLA as well. And for the first time, I'm going to disagree with you. I'm going to take Notre Dame over Maryland. I think Notre Dame is just a more well-rounded out team, and I think they can get it done over Maryland. Although, not to discredit Maryland for an amazing season that they have had, but I just think Notre Dame, even though they're three and Maryland's two, I think Notre Dame will get the job done. And then moving down, I've got um, Iowa beating Colorado. Even though Colorado is a Pac-12 team, I think Iowa is just too much to handle for Colorado. Um, and then you move over. I'm going to disagree again and pick Villanova over Miami. But first off, huge credit to Miami for knocking off number one Indiana. I mean, that is a tough task to beat number one Indiana, who's had an unbelievable season this season. So hats off to them. But I think the road ends here against Villanova, who's just an unbelievable team, unbelievable talent. So I think that's too much for them to handle. Utah, I think, beats LSU in that round. Um, Virginia Tech, I think, will beat Tennessee. You know, Tennessee, great season, but Virginia Tech is just too much to handle. Shot some, five, some. Yeah, and then I agree with the UConn pick. I think UConn will win this game, and I think they'll play South Carolina in the national championship game, and South Carolina wins it all. I think so, too. I'm still talking about Angel Reese. Um, that's her name, the LSU player, number 10. 6'3", sophomore from Baltimore. 
she she's averaging 23 and 15 this whole season, which is a crazy. That's a double double. That's a crazy stat line. I mean, I think I think she's got the edge over Utah. Just seeing how Utah's performed, and also looking at how our women's beat Utah, I think LSU might have it together. But anyways, that's the end of that one. So we're gonna go into the final topic: NFL mock draft picks. You know you love it. I don't love it, but let's start. Great. And they got. I see Bryce Young projection to go number one to Panthers. Um, that's gonna be interesting. Panthers still suck. So I don't know if he's gonna perform though, because also he's like five nine. So it's it's a Kyler Murray situation, and we're seeing how Kyler Murray is playing out. So it's like, do I want to invest in him as number one, or I don't want to pick somebody like C.J. Stroud or Anthony Richardson, which I would rather take just because of his size. No disrespect to Bryce Young. He's a great player. And then I think Texans at two with C.J. Stroud is a great pick because right now I don't even know who the Texans quarterback is. Last one was Deshaun Watson, but he, he's been gone for a little bit. So I take him. I like him at number two. And then Will Anderson for the Cardinals. I like an edge rusher. Um, they seem to have a lot of wide receiver problems. They have a lot of offensive problems for the Cardinals and quarterback issues. I love Kyler Murray, but he loves Call of Duty more than he loves football. So that's a great one. And they have head coaching issues. They have a whole lot of issues. So I don't know, I don't know what an edge rusher is going to do. Maybe it's just going to throw in something fresh. It's like when you're eating wings and then you get a little bit of celery with the ranch to cool your palate. So it doesn't really do anything because the, the intense heat is going to come back. So I don't know how much I like an edge rusher because it's not going to solve anything. But we'll just, we'll just push the problems under the rug and, and skip another playoff appearance. So those, those are the top three that I see and how well they're going to work. But anyways, to you. Yeah, so with the top three, um, with the Carolina Panthers, first off, huge trade that they pulled off with the Chicago Bears to get the number one pick. Gave up hey, they, a that's lot. them. I can't lie. The Bears, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, giving up even the number one receiver, DJ Moore. Um, the Panthers, I forget, some ESPN um, writer said, I can't remember if it was Adam Schefter or Mel Kuyper Jr., I forget who, but they said the Panthers are more likely to take either C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young. I'm going to say C.J. Stroud I like goes. I Stroud better. I think Stroud goes to the Panthers. Bryce Young will go to the Texans. The Cardinals, I think I will agree with the Will Anderson pick. Um, moving on to the fourth pick with the Colts. The Colts are going to take a quarterback, so you have two off the board right off the bat. So either Will Levis or Anthony Richardson, I think, will be the pick there. The one pick I'm struggling with is the five pick, Seattle. I have, I'm not sure what Seattle's going to do. Is Seattle going to take a quarterback? Because they've met with Bryce Young today and C.J. Stroud yesterday, so are they going to go a quarterback? And they've also met with Anthony Richardson, which if they go that route, that's the player they need to pick, yeah, in my no. opinion. I've been wondering that, too. And if they go defensive route, they're going to go defensive end or defensive tackle. So for me, it'll either be Jalen Carter or my preferred pick would be Tyree Wilson from Texas Tech. That is I, who I think Seattle will take in that five pick if they go that defensive part of the route. But... Who knows? I mean, Seattle's the one team I've struggled with. I see defense because they just gave Geno Smith an extension. They have, what's his name? Oh, Drew Locke. They got him as number two. I don't see another reason to buy another quarterback for no reason. I think they need to go focus somewhere across the board. But it's all good. Oh, yeah, the Bears, the Bears got scammed. I don't know what the Bears were doing. Or, no, was it the Bears or was it the Panthers? It might have been the Panthers. The Panthers got scammed for sure. They put up crazy amount of players and picks for a number one team but that just shows you what what the front office is doing but that's enough of the football we're going to bring it over to some birthdays for the weekend birthday we got a few weekend birthdays a couple we got uh damar hamblin incredible season recovery got my boy chris bosh you know love miami toronto then we got big booty lowry kyle kyle, kyle lowry birthday <laughs> is on saturday Love him to death. Let's see what he do. And then that's really it. We're wrapping it up. Social medias, please follow us, Wazoo uh, Sports Network, on Instagram and Twitter. No, Instagram and TikTok. K-Blade on YouTube. Wazoo Sports Net at Twitter. And then go get our merch if you want to. Anyways, that wraps up the show. A little boring. I'm kind of tired. I'm your host, J.D. Smith, signing off with 
Austin Peppers. All right, let's call it, man.